Welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 7 of SQL Server. In this session, we'll learn everything about an identity column. What is an identity column? How to create an identity column? How to supply explicit values for an identity column? And how to reset values of an identity column? Now, to understand this better, let's look at the existing table that, have, that we have been working with in all these parts. Now, we have this table called TBL person and if you look at this TBL person table here it has got four columns ID name email gender ID and age and if you look at the ID column here it's a primary key column but it's not an identity column okay how do I know if it's how do I know it's not an identity column if you go to the properties of that particular column in the properties vendor you see that identity it is set to false so it's not an identity column. So if a column is not an identity column, then in SQL Server, you will have to supply a value for that. For example, when I try to insert a row into this table, a new row into this table, how many columns are there? We have one, two, three, four, five columns. So we have to supply the values for all the five columns, including the ID column. Now let's say I want to insert, it, insert Todd's record. So the ID is 7, name is Todd, email, gender ID, and age. So if we go ahead and execute this query, it gets inserted fine. But, but if you look at the ID column, why are we using this primary key column? Basically to uniquely identify each record in this table. Let's assume if there are two Sarahs. If I want to uniquely identify them, I use their ID there. Now, IDs usually are some things that users need not have to provide. For example, if you have a web application, let's say you are registering as a customer, you don't provide your customer ID through that registration form. That is something we want to have automatically calculated by SQL Server. Okay, So under those circumstances, we can actually make use of the identity column. Okay, So if you mark a column as an identity column in SQL Server, you don't have to supply a value for that. Now let us see how to create a table with an identity column. Okay, Since we already have a table called TBL person, let's try to create another table called TBL person 1 maybe. So I'm going to create this table. I'm going to call, maybe we'll call this person ID. And obviously it's an integer. Now if you look at this particular column, you know, select that column and then drag this column properties vendor and you see that there is something called identity specification and if you click the plus sign next to that you see that you know is identity okay do you want this column to be an identity column yes I want this column to be an identity column okay and if you look at it as soon as I have selected yes, there are two other properties here, identity seed and identity increment. What are these? Basically, you are saying, you know, by converting this person ID column into an identity column, you're telling SQL Server, you want the value for this column to be automatically computed when we insert a new row. Okay, now if you want the value to be automatically computed, you have I mean, you can specify how you want that to be computed. For example, do you want that value to start at 1? or do you want to start at 100 okay so that's the seed okay where should i start usually it's one by default but you can customize that for example if you want to start at 1000 you can do so just put seed as 1000 there and how much do you want to increment by every time when you add a new record do you want to increment by 1 2 3 4 5 or 10 or 100 okay let's say for example i want the initial record to have 1000 and every next record that I insert needs to be incremented five by 5. Is that possible? Absolutely. Put that increment as 5 and every ne new record you insert it will be incremented by 5. But it doesn't make sense in reality. In reality it usually the seed is 1 and the increment is 1. But remember you can customize that if you want to. Alright, so we specified the information that is required for marking a column as an identity column. And since I want this to act as a primary key key, I can select primary key. Otherwise, you can just leave it. It's up to you. So I select it as primary key and then maybe the name of the person. Let's say this is Enver Caro 50. That's all I want at this point. Let's save this table. Let's call this TBL person 1. Click OK, which should create that table. 
Okay. Now, if you look at that column, let's close that. So, if you look at TBL person one, if I expand columns, refresh. So, we have this person ID column, which is again set as primary key. And if you go to if we go to the properties window, you should see this is an identity column. True, seed at one and increment at one. Cool. Now. If I have to insert a row into this particular table, so select star from TBL person 1, so we don't have any rows in there. So if I want to insert a value into this table, insert into TBL person 1, values, look at this. Now, how many columns have we got within this table? Within this table, we have got two columns. Now, and we know that person ID is an identity column. So we don't have to supply a value for that. All I have to do is supply the value for name column. For example, let's say John. And when I execute this query, what's going to happen is, since we specified the seed as 1 and increment as 1, it's going to start at 1 and then put person ID as 1 for this user, John. So let's execute that. When we select all the rows from this table, look at that, I get this person ID 1. And on the other hand, let's say, for example, if I insert Tom's record, execute that, select that row, we should have automatically got 2. So it's incrementing by one because we specified that during marking that column as an identity column. All right. Now, so I have marked this column as an identity column. Now everything is fine. I'm inserting new records, and you know the person ID is automatically being calculated, which is good. Okay. So at the moment we have person ID one, two, and three. Let's say for some reason, you know, maybe John has left our company or something, and this record got deleted. Let's delete that record. Delete it. Delete from TBL person one, where person ID is equal to one. So when I delete that row, you see that. Okay. I have Tom and Sarah, who is number two and number three. Now, let's say there is another person called Todd, and I want to add him to our database. When I insert him, and when we select the data back, look at that. Todd gets a person ID of four. It doesn't use, reuse the ID that is not there. You know, there is a gap here. Number one record is basically not present. And when I insert a new record, I want to reuse that old value. Is that possible? Absolutely. Okay. There are several ways to do that. Uh, let's see, first of all, how to supply. Now, let's say, for example, I'm going to insert maybe another record, Jane, and I want to issue him person ID of 1. Is that possible? Absolutely. Okay. Let's pass in person ID here and see what's going to happen when I try to insert that record. Remember, person ID is an identity column. You don't have to supply a value for that. It will be computed by SQL Server automatically. However, here, since we want to reuse that person ID of one with Jane user, I'm supplying this value explicitly. And let's try to insert this and see what happens. Okay, when I press F5, look at that, we get an error. Okay, what does the error say? An explicit value for the identity column. So an, ex an explicit value for the identity column in table TBL person 1 can only be specified when a column list is used and the identity insert is on. So which means you have to do some changes here if you want to explicitly supply a value for an identity column. Okay. First of all, you have to turn the identity insert on. Okay, so for this table, I want to tell to SQL Server, okay, I'm going to supply the values for identity column explicitly. And how do you do that? By turning this identity insert on. So let's do that first. Okay, so to turn the identity insert on, you'll use the set command. And what is that? Identity insert. Copy that set identity insert. So for what I need to set the identity insert? For this table, TBL person 1 on. All you have to do is this. So when I execute this query, okay, command completed successfully, which means we have turned on the identity insert for this TBL person 1. And the next thing that we have to do is when we insert this query, look at this. If I I mean, we have turned the identity insert on, but when I execute this query, I get the error again because we have done half half of it. 
we need to supply a column list as well. So in the insert query, not just the values, I need to specify what these values are for, for which column. I want this values for person ID and name columns. And now when I execute this query, you should see that Jane has got ID value of 1. Okay, now since I have this identity insert turned on, is it possible to drop this value and just supply name? What happens in that case? Look at that. Let's try to, you know, I'm not going to pass a value for person ID column. And let's say, for example, I have a, I want to insert Martin. So I'm just supplying a value for the name column. Okay, but keep in mind, we have the identity insert turned on for this table. So when I execute that query, look at this, explicit value must be specified. Why? Because you have the identity insert turned on. So, so if you don't want to supply the value explicitly for the identity column, then you have to turn off that. Because you fill the gap, so let me turn off so that when I insert the next record, it's going to get the next incremented value for that column. So when I press F5, it's turned off right now. And when we insert this guy now, we are going to get a new ID for that person. You know, now the sequence continues. Okay, one way to explicitly supply values for identity column is basically to turn on the identity insert. Cool. So we basically have seen. So remember, if a column is marked as an identity column, then the values for this column are automatically generated. Okay, when we insert a new row into the table, we don't have to supply values. But there might be scenarios where you know you have deleted some records and there are gaps generated, and you want to fill those gaps. You can temporarily turn off identity insert and then fill those gaps. Uh, I mean, you can turn on identity insert and then fill those gaps and turn off identity insert. All right, now let's say I've deleted all the rows from this table and I want to reset the identity insert. I mean, the, the value for identity column. Is that possible? Absolutely. Let's do one thing. Let's delete everything from TBL person. So I'm going to delete all the rows from TBL person, TBL person one table. And look at this, when you delete all the rows from TBL person table, don't assume that it's going to reset the values for identity column. Okay, so when I select rows from the table, obviously there, would be, there wouldn't be anything. And now when I insert a new row for Martin, and when we select that row now, look at this, it's getting the next identity value, it's not resetting that value. Okay, so if you have deleted all the rows and you want to reset, the identity value, is that possible? Absolutely. We have some commands called DBCC, Database Consistency Check Commands, which we'll be talking about in a great detail in a later session. But understand at the time being that we have this DBCC command, which we can use to reset the identity value and then start again at zero. So how do we do that? We use that DBCC check ident check identity basically dbcc check identity for this tbl person reseed that starting at zero okay starting at zero so let us see how to what what this command does so i'm going to say dbcc check identity that's the function and which for which table we want to do that we want to do that for tbl person one table and what do we want to do? We want to reseed starting at zero. Okay, look at this. When I execute this query, what's going to happen? Okay, so we basically have deleted everything from this table. So there's nothing there. So when we execute this command, look at that. You know, current identity value zero, current column value zero. Now, if I am going to insert this new row now, what's going to happen, the current identity value is 0. And if you remember, we have said the increment value is 1. So for this new row, Martin, it's going to get 1 and insert that. It's going to start that again. So now when we select the values from TBL person table, you should see that Martin has got 1. 
okay so it's also possible to reset the values for identity columns if you have deleted all the rows in the table by using this dbcc check identity command we'll be talking about dbcc commands in sql server in a later session on this slide you can find resources for asp.net and c sharp interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day